I am Matt Williamson coming at you again here about a week away from camp in Latrobe. Pretty psyched about that. And I mentioned that this Fantasy Point database that I've been digging into heavy, it's unbelievable. Check my, my Twitter feed out if you want to check it out. You can use it for free for quite a while. Uh, I did a lot of offensive trends. Was that yesterday or two days ago? Whatever it was. Urge you to go check that out if you didn't listen. But I want to talk about Steelers' pass defense in the first segment and Steelers' run defense in the second segment. There's some interesting things here that I uncovered. And first of all, completion percentage allowed. You know, what percentage of passes are completed against your defense? Steelers were the sixth best in the league. And then they have a metric called adjusted completion percentage. So it takes account for like spikes, drops, throwaways, things like that. Like if a quarterback comes to the line of scrimmage, spikes the ball, it wasn't like because you were a great defense and you should get better credit for, you know, uh, disallowing a completion. But they were seventh best in that. Obviously, they're going to be close. There's not a ton of difference. So you're one of the best two in terms of, yeah, I mean, in the, those two metrics, you're in the top seven for passing completion allowed. I think that's really good. This is interesting to me. How far downfield does the opponent attack you? And only three defenses were attacked on average pass deeper downfield than the Steelers. However, not a real high percentage of tr what they call true deep throws, which I think were 20 yards or more. They didn't define that. They just called it deep throws. So they th there were three categories, short, middle, deep. And the Steelers were not attacked deep all that high. You know, and they were, you know, middle of the road towards lower end. But overall, when you accumulate all the passes thrown against them, that average depth of target was the third highest. So my two takeaways, which totally add up watching games, watching tape, they're not going to attack this team super deep. Why? Minka. You know, people fear Minka, and he does not have that many targets in his direction, period. I mean, that's just a fact. But they did still attack the second levels. I mean, I think the linebackers, maybe Edmonds gets lumped into there as well, is where everyone game planned to throw against Steelers. And when you add it up, you know, eight yarder, 10 yarder, nine yarder, you end up with a pretty high average depth of target, even without the 30 yarders in there. Interesting to me, but it adds up. Here's another one. Only four defenses allowed a lesser percentage of the passing yards allowed after the catch. So X, every team allows this many passing yards, but how, what percentage of it came before the catch? What percentage of it came after the catch? Only four defenses had lesser allowed after the catch. And what might also be a Minko factor. This one really has nothing to do with them, but it does matter. Only seven defenses were, I'm going to call it luckier. We could call it better if you want, but luckier with drops. And only two defenses benefited more from a yardage standpoint from drops. It's different drop. I mean, if the opponent gets hit right in the hands one yard down the field is different than 50 yards down the field in terms of how it impacts the game. But it's not like you were a great defense either way. That's just kind of a luck factor. So only two defenses benefited more from a yardage standpoint in terms of drops. This is where things... I think there was a misnomer, and I wrote an article not long ago about the Steelers' pass rush. It's probably two months ago now I think about it. it. wasn't nearly as good as you think. Time to throw was eighth highest in the league. So only seven defenses had quarterbacks holding the football for a longer time before letting it go out of their hands. Not great. This is even worse. Third worst in percentage of dropbacks – where they created pressure. Even though people were holding the ball long, they weren't getting, quote, pressures. Only two pass rushes were worse in that regard. Also, similar, third worst in pressure rate over expectation. And what that means is third and eight's different than third and one. You know what I mean? Like situationally, what does the average NFL defense do in these situations in terms of creating pressure? Steelers were the worst in terms of percentage of dropbacks. 
But I kind of look at that in two ways. Like, what if Larry Ogunjobi gets back to being a six sack guy and Leal takes a step forward and TJ Watt comes back, <laughs> you know, and of course, mix in a little bit of golden instead of some of the guys that didn't get the home. So I would expect their pass rush to be better this year. And what if it is? And all those good numbers we mentioned might even get better. You know, I mean, but it wasn't good last year. The pass rush was much worse than the naked eye might have seen, I guess is a good way to put it. All right, quick break here. We'll come back with some run defense stuff, which was a lot better than two years ago. All right, there's some standard stuff, you know, yards per game. They were eighth best in the league. 108.1 yards allowed on the ground per game. Eighth best. Also eighth best in yards per carry. They allow 4.36. You're going to see a lot of seventh and eighth bests in their run defense metrics here. So, but here's a number one. Percentage of carries when a touchdown is scored. Best in the league. So when the opponent decided to run the football, only 1.6% of those those carries resulted in an end zone dance. That was the best in the league, at disallowing touchdowns per carry. They don't define stuff rate, but I basically know what it is, is a negative play for the offense, you know, it, it, behind the line of scrimmage, caused a fumble, um, zero yards or less. Well, in terms of the stuff rate, which is a good play for the defense, a bad play for the offense in a run play, Steelers were third best, their defense. Really good. Another one, percentage of carries that went for 10 or more yards. Eighth best, only 10.2% of handoffs went for 10 yards or more, which isn't a very far distance. If you remember two years ago, that was the big problem with the run defense was they were getting gouged on huge runs. Much better this year. A lot of this shows tackling really improved. Percentage of carries that go for 30 plus yards also was eighth best. So only seven defenses were allowing, you know, big, big gains on a percentage basis. Missed tackles forced per attempt seventh best. So the opponent, this is a, an offensive stat. How many missed tackles do you force as an offense? Well, the same is true for defense. Only six defenses were better in terms of allowing missed tackles to occur. Yards after contact per attempt, eighth best. Strangely, yards before contact per attempt, eighth best. So, you would think it'd be heavy one way or the other, but to be good in both is pretty impressive. You know, you're not allowing a ton of yards before contact. So your D linemen aren't getting blown off the ball and these guys are running through giant holes. And you're also tackling well when you do make first contact with the ball carrier. Both were eighth best. I don't know the reason for this, but I bet it's not an accident. But in terms of zone runs, you know, there's basically there's either man gap runs or zone runs just to make it as generic as possible. Obviously, there's overlap and, you know, gray area here. But they faced the Steelers faced the fewest percentage of zone runs in the league. Only 37 percent of the runs against them were zone runs. And. As is the trend, they were eighth best in terms of defending zone runs, only allowed 3.94 yards per carry. And their success rate on zone runs was the sixth best defense in the league as well. Success rate allowed. So in turn, because you faced the fewest zone attempts in the league, you obviously can be at the top of the league in man gap run concepts. They faced the third most of those but they had the ninth best success rate defending them. So it wasn't like, boy, they're just kill zone runs and getting gouged by man gap runs. But apparently every offensive coordinator that faced them shied away from the zone running game. I don't have a great answer why, <laughs> you know, I mean, the def- it's not like 
boy, they're always in their base 3-4 and we never see 3-4s and we don't want to run zone against it. I mean, maybe there's a little bit of that, you know, with the five-man front. But overall, I just apparently whenever they did film breakdowns during the week to prepare for the Steelers, they thought running zone runs was a bad idea. I don't know. Nerd it out again on you on the defense. Take care. Talk to you tomorrow.